everybody. Right, today I just want to show you a few hints and tips on how to keep your Space Engineers game running smoothly. Uh, Space Engineers is still technically an alpha, it has been forever. I think it's going to take a while before they get the final release out, but this is a good thing. It means they're always adding new features, always adding interesting stuff. The problem with this is it there is a lot of bugs, a lot of uh, problems you can come across while playing, and uh, you know can, it can cause you a bit of frustration playing the game. So here's a few tips just to help alleviate those problems. Uh, first off is just on uh, playing a, playing your own games. If you've got your saved games file, you can go onto the load games and edit settings. So if you find a nice game that you've been playing for a while, edit settings. You can see that you can change the mods that are actually in the game already. So sometimes um, the mods, when they're released and a new version of Space Engineers comes out, the mods can cause uh, crashes and problems. So you can just remove them in this area here, and you can add all different mods as well if you want. Uh, and again, you can change your advanced features, so it's quite handy to just to know that you've got the edit settings. You can also change the world settings from your um, file browser on your computer. If you go to your Windows Users, your user app data, roaming, space engineers, and in your save games file, you'll find all of your same games in here, so you can open them up. Um, you can see what's going on in here. A little bit about these files. Obviously, Earth-like is the actual planet. It's the voxel save for the planet. You've got the moon, um, astral procedural, um, asteroid voxels as well, which is handy. And you've also got your sandbox files here. Now, this sandbox file, it's not the SBS, uh, the triple O file. It's the other one that you can actually open up in Notepad. Um, and with this one, you can also edit a lot of the world settings in here. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a good chunk of what the world settings are. You can change it from creative to survival. And other handy tips and tricks you can do. Um, another thing just to mention while we're in this area is if you do have a game which is running an infinite amount of asteroids, um, I believe they can cause a few slowdowns and a few problems while, um, while running huge amounts of asteroids. If I can find a nice uh, a saved game file here, which I've been running. Um, system, system. Here we go. If I open one of these ones, you'll see that it does save all of your procedural generated asteroids in this folder. Um, once you've been playing the game for a while and you've created so many of these asteroids, I believe it can cause problems while you're inside the asteroid to slow down effect. So something that's handy to do if you're getting fed up with this is just come on into this file, into your saved games, and you can just delete a load of your uh, procedural generated asteroids, just completely delete them. And then when you play the game again, it will keep procedurally generating them, so it's not like they'll disappear forever, it'll just put random other asteroids in close to the areas where these ones were. So it's a nice way of you know, stopping the slowdown while you're in asteroids. When you do this, do be careful not to delete your uh, planets, and maybe if you've got any interesting asteroids in there as well, they are renamed other stuff. Just the asteroids with numbers on other procedural generated ones. I don't think I've got... Oh, there we go. Asteroid base. You can see this has a different name, so it's one of the big asteroids that I've actually imported into the game myself. Um, and again, definitely do not delete the sandbox files, because you'll be in trouble if you delete them. You won't have any ships or bases left. So... Yeah, that's a little bit about how you can keep things clean from that perspective. Okay, there's a couple of other features I want to tell you about when you're in your game. Uh, this applies to creative and to survival mode, so it's really handy if you're playing on survival mode, maybe with friends or even your own, and you've uh, got some large grids, large ships floating around out there. Um, they can cause quite a lot of slowdown in your game. Uh, you'll notice it feels like a lag. Sometimes people think it might be like a uh, lag on their game that's not, uh, their computer's not powerful enough. So in order to check this thing, you can hold Shift and F11. It'll bring up a little uh, live feed of all the information that's happening on your game right now. You'll see at the very top, you've got frames per second. Um, the big one to take note of is the simulation speed. At the moment, it's at 1.00. If you've got too many grids going on or too much stuff going on in the server, maybe you know you've got been mining and there's over a hundred little pieces of rock floating around crashing into each other. This can slow down the uh, simulation speed, so you'll notice that 
your game feels like it's going a lot slower than it should do. If it goes below anything, below 1, really, 100, uh, you should start to look at how to clean your game up. My favourite way of doing it, the simplest way to do it, is opening up the Space Master options. Now that is Alt and F10 to bring up this menu on the right hand side that says Space Master here. If you enable Creative Mode Tools by clicking this thing, it'll give you like, it's almost like a God Mode I guess. It is slightly cheating so, you know, you've got to refrain from going crazy and building whatever you want when you're in Survival Mode. You know, keep it to a game and not to creative mode all the time. This will um, give you options to be able to clean up the world that you're in. So if you click on the grids here, cycle objects, you can find the biggest grids or the fastest moving grids. You can find lots of nice uh, options to choose from. So if you click on biggest grid, it'll show you one of the biggest grids in your game at the moment. And you can click next and it'll cycle through all of the grids in your game. Um, if you've got some huge grids out there that are taking up a lot of uh, the speed of the game, then you can just remove them here, uh, or depower them and stop them if they're travelling or crashing into the ground. Sometimes if your lander hits the ground, it can bump up and down and cause a few problems, so you can just stop it or remove it. Um, there's a few other options to like mass remove things as well. Uh, finding only small ships, large grids, you know, so if you just want to get rid of all the small ships in your game or all large ships, you can do that. Uh, these are important. So we've got uh, choosing whether to remove fixed stations. Let's say um, just something's travelling in one direction, so your ship's broken, something floats off and keeps going in the same direction. Uh, it's obviously not anything that you want in the game. Uh, accelerating. These start to get into areas where you might need to be careful if you want to delete these things. Um, powered, obviously you're not deleting things with power on them or controlled, you know, if you've got players in your game who are controlling things uh, with production and with medical room, that's the big one and if you delete things with medical room you will delete spawn points you can also choose, you know, less than 20 blocks so they're pretty small parts, it's unlikely that anyone's going to want anything saving over 20 parts and also how far away from the player it is so if you change this to zero it'll delete anything that's close to players whereas at the moment it's at 100 meters um, so all of these things that you take, it won't be deleted if it's closer to 100 meters than uh, a player or the last position a player was in. Um, and then all you need to do is remove trash at the bottom. Um, and also remove floating objects is quite handy for pieces of ore or pieces of ships, you know, steel plates that are floating around out in space. They get rid of these things and this can really help to improve your sim speed, uh, get it back up to what it should be. Um, the other things to mention here, which is really handy to know, is the copy and paste feature in the game. Um, I think this is quite well known at the moment, but uh, I'll give it, I'll cover it anyway because most people uh, like to use this feature. So, in the game, you can actually uh, copy and paste any grids, anything you want to use. Go back to my man again. I can uh, head over to this ship here. You just choose one of the building blocks, you hold over it, you hold Control and C, will copy the ship completely. If I fly over here, you can see I'm actually too close to place it at the moment. You need to be uh, a little bit of distance away, otherwise you can't completely copy it. Let's try again from this distance. Control and C, will copy it. And then moving away, I can place a copy of my ship down anywhere. Now if you want to copy and paste but remove the object and move it somewhere else, it's control and X, same as normal ways of copy and pasting in Windows, um, so that will remove it and then control and V will paste it back in again as well. So these are really handy for, you know, if you've got a big ship out there, you want to move it somewhere else or it's uh, causing lag. But uh, the other things is if you press F10 you can save them. So create from clipboard. Clipboard is once you've copied it, Control and X will be in your clipboard. So you can create a new ship from clipboard um, and you can put it in your list and save it as a ship. So if you build a great ship that you really like and you want to take it over to another game, this will copy and paste will transfer through games as well. So if I copy and paste, copy here, I can load another game and paste into that game. Um, yep, yeah, so back onto the list. 
The other thing that I've learned quite recently is if you hold Control and B when you're looking at a ship, this will save it automatically into your list. So you don't need to create from clipboard. You don't need to do anything like that. It will save it into this into this list. Um, it usually saves it under large ship or small ship or um, platform, depending on what the ship actually was. So sometimes you do have to go down, and it will take a little screenshot of the um, the ship or the item that you've copied that when you hold Control and B. So a couple of nice uh, nice options here. Another thing to mention on the list is at the bottom are usually where the uh, the ships that you subscribe to they are kept on the bottom here. So if you want to you know load in a couple of ships, this is where you'll find them when you've subscribed. Another thing I want to mention is that you can actually paste in new planets and new asteroids as well. Um, now you have to have the the god mode on, what was it called, space master mode on. So you need to make sure that you've got the tick here. And I think this will work in creative mode as well, so you can do it for creative mode. Uh, in order to do that it's shift and F10 and it brings up the spawn menu. So here you've got the option to bring in predefined asteroids. These are the older asteroids that were in the game originally, um, you know, they're a bit more interesting, they have some quite cool features on them, so put in them, or you can just throw in procedural asteroids, you can choose a seed for it, um, so it'll just generate random ores inside of it, so you can choose a size of like, huge asteroids in there if you want. <laughs> Again, so we've got planets, you can choose which planets, you can choose the size of the planet, um, uh, generate seeds, and you can choose which kind of planet, aliens, and so it's really nice if you've if you've started yourself a nice um, survival game and you've been playing on it for a while in space and you kind of want to get some asteroids but you don't want to lose all your base. You know, if you've got a nice astro a nice base in an asteroid and you want to stick a planet in there. It's possible to do it through this feature, which is great. And again, you can also spawn in items. So every item in the game, all of your parts and weapons and Anything that you might need, you can uh, spawn them in here, so you can throw in, for example, we can throw in some ore, cobalt, or this can get a bit dangerous, obviously you need to set the amount, can get a bit dangerous when you start going crazy with the amounts, if you uh, drop in an, ass, uh, an ore piece that's gigantic, if you put it on a planet it will fall and make a hole in the planet, um, and if you put it near a ship, it's uh, got... Uh, gravity on it, it'll fall through and completely destroy your ship. And that goes for components as well. If you, you know, if you get some uranium ingots and you make a huge stack of them, it can be a problem if you spawn them in and you haven't got the inventory to pick them up when you spawn them and it falls to your ship, it'll hit the ship and bounce around everywhere and destroy everything so fast. So be aware that, you know, keep away from gravity when you're spawning in items or at least uh, be quick when you spawn it in and picking it up. Yep, so if you do manage to drop in some ore or something in your ship and it bounces around, completely destroys your ship, uh, it's not completely the end of the world. There's, there is a backup save system in Space Engineers at the moment. Um, if you go to your files, you'll see them in under, let's see, let's find a recently... Um, recently saved thing, here we go. So you'll notice there's a folder in here called Backup. You can open this up and it's got all your latest five backups in there as well. So if you drop a piece of ore or do anything else crazy, um, smash something to bits and then it automatically saves straight after you've done it. It's not the end of the world, you can go to the backups. I think there's also a system for loading backups on the main menu as well, uh, but I won't go into that one just yet because I'm not, <laughs> I've not actually looked how that one works. I just know that they're in the files. And finally, I just want to mention a little bit about the spectator mode as well. If you're in creative or if you enable a space master mode for yourself, um, you can get into your uh, spectator mode by pressing F7. We'll put you in, it looks at your uh, player. Nope, sorry, it's not F7, it's F8. F7 looks and F8 gives you like a free mode. To get back into your character, it's just F6 again. So hit F8 and then you can look around. Uh, if you use your mouse wheel while in this mode, scrolling upwards will increase your speed so you can go faster and faster and faster. And yeah, you can really get up some speed. 
and again scrolling down with your mouse wheel will slow you down so you can uh, make more refined movements so while you're in spectator mode sometimes you want to actually take your little man somewhere if you want to quickly travel over to another planet and get into spectator mode zoom right over to another planet let's head to uh, Mars now and slow it down you can bring your uh, camera close to the close to the ground and if you hold control and space tap space it will actually drop your man down there I don't think I've got any oxygen on. there we go so you can teleport yourself anywhere on well anywhere you can get to uh, within space engineers it's really handy for getting around if you're playing with friends you know you can zoom straight to them quite easily or if uh, you've got players on your server or whatnot that are struggling with something you can zoom over there and give them a bit of a hand so uh, yeah it's pretty handy to know I think that's about it just for a few tips and tricks on keeping your game smoothly running and how to you know not waste time taking a long time fixing stuff I hope this helps very much. If it has helped, please throw me a like and uh, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, guys.